All right, this is our last video on thermodynamics, and we're going to look at the laws of thermodynamics. But the way we're going to start that out uh, is by looking at efficiency. I think that's going to be the easiest way to understand the laws of thermodynamics, because that's, um, that's how I think of the laws of thermodynamics. So efficiency is a simple idea. I think you talked about it in fifth or sixth grade whenever you got into the idea of simple machines. Essentially, it's work output over work input. So in this case, my work input is how many joules of energy we're using. So for this example, we're solving for efficiency, that's going to be um, 30 joules. I'm exerting 30 joules to do whatever's going to happen. And over here I see that we've lifted up 3 meters of 6 newton mass, which means we've done 18 joules worth of work. That's the work output. That's what physically actually got done. 18 joules. And so what we're going to need to do, okay, and then times 100%. So looking at the efficiency of this, 18 divided by 30, we see that we have 60% efficiency. Okay. Now, in a real-world situation, we know that if I put 30 joules in, I will never see 35 joules come out. It just doesn't make sense. I'm not, I'm not going to ever get more energy than I put in. That's a conservation of energy idea. Any energy I put in has to go into moving an object. The rest, the 40%, guess what? 40% of my energy is lost to heat. because of the gears and internal mechanisms and friction on the on the pulley we lose some of our work to heat in this case about forty percent goes to heat and sixty percent actually does work but all of the energy i used has to be accounted for that's the conservation of energy i have some kind of potential energy and it's going into getting work done and it's going into uh... heat but it's all accounted for and this is sort of our setup for looking at the laws of thermodynamics. So let's look at them. The first one is that our efficiency can never be greater than 100%. Uh, we, or we cannot get more out than we put in. M machines may decrease the amount of force or, or effort that we as a person exert but we're still going to be doing the same amount of work I will never put in 30 joules and get this thing to go up six meters that doesn't make any sense that'd be 36 joules worth of work it just doesn't happen that way so first law of thermodynamics says can't get more out than we put in really it's a statement of the conservation of energy All of my energy must be accounted for. The energy I use goes to doing work and goes into heat. But it all has to be accounted for. The second law just means I can never, ever, ever get to 100% because I'm always going to lose some energy to heat. And that's what we saw here. 40% of this went into heat. Okay, Heat's always going to get made. Another thing about the second law is that heat flows from hot to cold. This is something that we call entropy. Entropy has to do with disorder. All right, so if it's the big common example is if you have, um, you know, glass, a drinking glass, um, and you're holding it in your hand, and then you drop it on the floor and it shatters into a thousand pieces. Well, there's more disorder when it's in a thousand pieces, so we have more entropy. Really, what it's saying is that nature. seeks disorder. So if you have something that's really hot and all the particles are moving around really fast inside of there and you put it in contact with something that's cold and the particles aren't moving so much, you're going to see a transfer of energy from the hot thing to the cold thing to get those particles moving faster. That's, that's, that's the second law. That's the idea of entropy. We're going to make things 
move faster overall. We're going to get more things moving faster. And then the third law of thermodynamics is that eventually everything will be lost to heat. We don't actually do much with this. It's just a nice consequence of having friction in the world. That's what thermodynamics is all about. So we're going to look at two things that we um, use with thermodynamics. One of them is a steam engine. The other one is sort of an air conditioner. Um, two interesting things. So with a steam engine, and, and we'll just run through how this is using the laws of thermodynamics uh, to work. The steam engine, we burn something. So this is where we start. We put energy into the system. So there's a lot of energy in the natural gas, or the propane or whatever happens to be burning here. And it goes into heating the water. Now we're going to lose some heat here. We're going to lose heat. That is heat escaping. Okay, so that, that has to do with entropy getting out, heat going places, heating other things up. Once we heat this water, it boils. And that hot water wants to move through the system. It's pushing itself away from everything else. This is um, a second law thing. It's spreading out. It's moving around and making things hotter. Now, with pipes and stuff, we can force that to go to a certain place. Um, and because of this thing's desire to move, it's going to spin this turbine. And then it's going to condense and, and, and we'll pump it back through and we'll heat it again. Now, all along the way, we are losing heat to the environment, to the system. This is not an efficient process because we will always lose heat. That, that's how things go. And the whole idea behind the turbine is that this is what makes our engine turn. This is what makes the uh, generator go. Um, most of with the exception of hydro and solar, um, most most electrical plants use this basic system to make things happen. We put in some energy and we get about um, 40 to 50 percent of that energy out as actual work in the turbine. The rest is lost to heat. The other way we do this is air conditioning. Air conditioning is funny. What we do is take something that is warm and we pump heat out of that into something that is hot. So this would be your house at, let's say, 80 degrees. You don't want that. And it's going to pump heat to the outside, which is 100 degrees. I'll say Fahrenheit because that's how I think. Now. Entropy says that heat's going to flow in this direction. That's, that's great, but we don't want that. You want heat to flow this way. So what you have to do is extra work. It requires extra work to make this go backwards. That's why your air conditioning is so expensive. It has to do with cycles of... of evaporating and condensing. That's what makes things cold. But all of that requires a whole lot of extra energy. Your air conditioner is not efficient at all. You'll never get an efficiency award for that. So um, those are our laws of thermodynamics.